Warning. Listening to this show may result in increased levels of inspiration, motivation, and innovation. Side effects can include the immediate urge to take massive action to build a better business and life for yourself and others. You've been warned. Welcome to Influencers Radio with your host, Jack Mize. And welcome back to another episode of Influencers Radio. Uh, today, we have a, a really, this is a fascinating show because it has all the elements. You know, if I had to come up with a superhero, my guest today would be um, a new superhero because one, she kind of fits. If you think about Gotham City and all that, she is from New York and, you know, even if no matter where you're from, you're going to be able to pick up some of that. But the superhero, her villain, would be mediocrity. And you think about that. A lot of people think the the biggest threat to entrepreneurs, to people in life is, you know, a failure or knowledge or ability. But after listening and, and watching what my guest today does, I realize that mediocrity is probably one of the, the silent threats that most people don't consider, but it is huge. And you'll understand why as we go through this. Uh, today, my guest is Renee Gambino. She, uh, helps business owners. She helps, uh, entrepreneurs. Really, she helps people that are in business. They have reached a certain level of success, but they have not reached that potential that they knew they could reach, that they they romanticized about when they first went into business, and they're just tired of fantasizing about it, and they are ready to make it happen and really hit the success that they know that they have the potential to, but also be able to enjoy their life the way that they had envisioned uh, being able to enjoy it by working so hard to do what they do. So with that, I'd like to welcome to Influencers Radio, Renee Gambino. How are you doing, Renee? I'm great, Jack. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, I'm really uh, excited about this because you you bring up a lot of these points that, that, you know, once you talk about them, I realize that you know, this is happening every day. This happens to a lot of people that it's just not recognized or it's not talked about. And that big one that jumped out at me is mediocrity, the threat of mediocrity. Let's start out with that. What is it about mediocrity that is just creates such an obstacle and slows down so many uh, hardworking entrepreneurs out there from, from reaching that success that they uh, they set out for. Well, Jack, mediocrity, you know, to me, you know, m- my definition of of that is um, staying within the status quo, right? So, you know, in order to threaten mediocrity, we, we have to challenge the status quo. But what happens? We we tend to stay in that mediocre place because. It's a really safe place to be because otherwise we truly have to stand out. We have to get up and say, hey, I'm really good at what I do and I should get paid what I'm worth and I'm okay with owning that. And, you know, that's the trouble spot for people where they really, really get stuck is making that decision where they say, I'm going to stand out. I mean, I see it all over the place. I mean, even in down to like even just images and and websites, you know, people want their website to look like other people in their industry because that's the status quo. And that's like, okay, great. So you're just going to put yourself in the mix with everybody else. And that's how you'll always stay in that place of not standing out. And that's a problem. It is. And it seems like, you know, it's, contrarian to what people think they, when they think I'm going to go into business for myself, it's because I'm good at what I do and, and I can help people the way other people may not be able to help people. And, you know, uh, I know I need to stand out so people will choose me. And then the first decisions they make are, well, how can I blend in? Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and, you know, you talk about those stereotypes and I, I find that really interesting uh, in that, the thing that probably moved people into business was the, them recognizing their abilities. And then they immediately go to, okay, so who do I need to become? Who do I need to present myself as so that I'm acceptable to 
my audience. And you find that to be uh, more of a, um, you, you know, impeding their, their progress or success than helping them kind of launch their success, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it comes down to everything, you know, what their business card looks like, what their clothing looks like. And, um, you know, I don't want to be too much, you know, I mean, you know, just think about even going to, you know, a conference or a networking event or just you know, walking around town as you're representing yourself. You know, if you're average, you're average. You see somebody that stands out, you know, we see people, you know, especially if, you know, you're in New York City, you're going to see people that really stand out. And interestingly enough, you know, you go, huh, look at that. And how someone can actually stand out in the middle of even, say, like Times Square in Manhattan, it's pretty extraordinary. And I give, always give that person an incredible amount of credit because that's one of the most difficult places in the world to actually stand out. And if you can make that happen, and people think it takes a lot. They need to be, you know, off the wall or they just need to have been born a certain way. And, and that's really not true because I never recommend people are really off the wall because then you come off as strange and weird um, and you don't want to do that. But certainly if everybody could connect with their actual uniqueness, that's exactly what will make the difference. And, uh, and that's when clients, potential clients, notice and that's when businesses grow. Well, you know, that's what, what clicked with me with, you know, the, the, the strategies and, and this concept that you have, because when, uh, when you describe how people work so much harder to blend in, uh, that doesn't get results versus being their natural selves, being who they are, which requires far less work when they let that happen, uh, some remarkable things occur. Talk about that, that transition and, and because you went through that, that yourself, you know, you talk about how hard you were working to try to hide from your, your true yeah. self. And, and so many people do that. Uh, and I really didn't recognize that until, you know, I saw what you were talking about and understood that concept of how hard people work to blend in. And it really is, you know, when you look at it that way, it's, it's so simple, but it's not simple for people to break out of that. No, it's not at all because it's, it's the norm. It's the status quo. And when we take that step, it can actually feel almost, it's, it's incredibly uncomfortable, number one, because we, we go to that familiar place. Um, that's, that's usually what we choose because we know at least our feet are on the ground when it's familiar, right? And we feel unsteady when we step out of that. But that's actually the moment where growth actually happens. The more uncomfortable and not steady that we feel when we step into that, you know you're on the right track. And that's, you know, it's just something that people have to make that decision, Jack. They have to make that decision and say that I know who I am and I, you know, and it takes a little work. I mean, we don't just all of a sudden go, okay, I know exactly who I am. But we we can tell when we're struggling because it's going to happen in the results that we're getting. So if there are areas, if you're not exactly working with the clients that you want to work with, if you're not connecting joint venturing with the kind of people that you'd like to, you know, that means you're actually not being yourself because you wouldn't want those type of clients or you wouldn't want to connect with those type of people if it, if it wasn't who you are. And, you know, I found that I was always, you know, to, you know, early on in my entrepreneurship, I found myself like trying to say the right words and, and trying to make sure that I was, impressing a certain person, or I literally felt like I just didn't even belong in a highly intellectual conversation, you know, because it was too sophisticated and I wasn't that sophisticated. So therefore I didn't belong there. And, you know, it took me some time to recognize that, you know, how much I had to offer to a conversation. And what people will find is that they're in a group of different likes of people, you actually become more interesting by not being like them. And you're even more accepted into that scenario. 
Well, I can definitely st- say it because I've, I've had the, uh, uh, the opportunity and privilege of, of seeing you in a live event, you know, scenarios and you definitely stand out in, in, especially when there's a sea of, of, of people and vendors and sponsors that look just like the next. And, and you're able to stand yeah. out in, in, you know, that situation. Um, you know, one of the things that, it occurred to me as, you know, when I really started recognizing and, and thinking about the things that you talk about with, with uh, people, you know, blending in and trying to fit that stereotype is the result of that is they become a, a me too business, right? There's, there's very little that, that, uh, separates them from their competition, like you were just talking about. And the result of that, that, uh, you kind of shine a light on is that when you put yourself in that me too situation, what do you have to separate yourself outside of, of price? And that puts people in what you call the number one success killer, which is the negotiable mindset that immediately puts people into a position. The only way to, to differentiate myself is now let's, uh, let me be negotiable. Let me kind of work what I do to make the, the deal happen. Right. And and so make yourself fit, you know, you got to negotiate how I'm going to manipulate myself, my fees, who I am, what I do in order to fit into a situation. Yeah. And, and that is, you know, it seems so logical when you put that there and it seems like people are, are scrubbing so hard to get nowhere you know, because of this, this, the stereotyping. So when they work that hard and then they have nothing left to do, but to, uh, they, they take on this negotiable mindset just to make their business work. Talk about how that is the, the, the success killer for so many business and how it affects businesses and how you can help them recognize this and, and turn it around. Well, my definition of negotiable mindset is being in agreement with accepting circumstances that keep you in mediocrity as truth. And those circumstances can look like I can't charge that much or, um, you know, power is pretentious. I don't want anybody to think that about me or, you know, I don't want to stand out too much because that's a scary place and how could I keep up with that? And it'll show up by negotiating your fees or uh, starting to offer discounts or starting to, you know, just create things because other people are doing them and using other people's models. Now, I'm not saying reinvent the wheel in your industry. You do want to use strategy around that. But it starts to show up in basically how much money you're making and who you're working with. And when you start to negotiate that, what people don't understand, like you were talking about, you know, continually working so hard to fit in and stay in that status quo place. But it, what you're actually doing is making it more difficult for your potential clients to make a decision to choose to work with you. It is very hard to make a decision if you're looking at five different mediocre service providers, like they don't know how to assess the risk anymore of, you know, will they really do what they say they're going to do? Will I really get a return on investment? I don't know who to choose. So when people stop negotiating who they are, what they charge, what kind of value that they provide, people are able to make a decision. It actually makes it easier for them. We stress over, I don't know if I should charge that much, or I don't know if I should do this, or I don't know if I should do that. When in reality, it's actually helping people to make a decision. We just get caught up on how we personally feel and what kind of value systems we have around the money mindset. And we start forgetting about the potential client. Like, no, you have to help them make this decision. Stop negotiating and start putting it out there so that they can say yes. You know, that, I, yeah, it absolutely does. And I think you just distilled down kind of what exactly, you know, the, 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 the value that, that you create and the value that you provide to uh, your clients is 
to be able to distinguish between being the best at what you do, because you can work really hard to to improve the tactical side of your business, to get better at your skill, which does uh, often absolutely nothing to increase your value or your business. Right? It just makes you better in your mind. And that's what so many people think that they need to invest their time and money in. But I think uh, what you just said, it's about making, giving people a reason to choose you. Yeah. Otherwise they're confused. So they either choose nobody or they eventually find someone that's not negotiating their own value and providing and delivering on their service. You know, just because you stand out doesn't mean, you know, people are going to stick with you. You must deliver on what you say, but it ends the confusion for people. And that's what's most important because people are running around confused all day long. And so if you really want to help people, you got to help them not be so confused. And that that's, that's, it's very interesting. That's when people get a sigh of relief. Like this person knows their stuff. This person knows exactly who they are. This person knows what they charge. I feel really good about that. And people actually trust that more. And honestly, that whole thing around being the best, like you, you said, people get caught up. I'll just get another certification or another degree, or I'll take another class and I'll put another piece of paper on my wall. Number one, nobody cares about the best and they actually don't believe it anyways. We might say, oh, that person's the best at this, but that's because we had a personal experience with them. If you run around saying you're the best, no one's going to believe you anyways. And it sounds like a gimmick. So we can take that pressure off of us by knowing that people are not looking for the best. They're looking for a lot of value with someone they can trust and get what that person says that they were going to deliver in the first place. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And, and I think your ability to recognize that in, in people and recognize what does allow them to stand out and recognize, you know, who they really are or, or recognize who they're trying to be and get out of that. Um, and so I want to talk now about a part that people have to face. And that's the, this isn't necessarily going to be comfortable when they do that because part of standing out is not only letting people see who you really are, uh, but also being able to accept the fact that not everyone is going to like who you are and being okay yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're trying to fit in every single place that you go, you know, you're in a hamster wheel and you're going to make yourself crazy. But once again, that's where people get into that conflict of confusing other people. You know, part of the negotiable mindset, you know, is thinking that either we have to serve everybody or there's not enough people because most of the time we're trying to be so generic that we're trying to serve everybody. But if you think about it, if you do not get really clear and stand up and be uncomfortable and be who you really are, you're going to attract potential clients that you don't even like or you don't even really want to work with. I mean, you want to work with people that get you, even if you're very different, because I'm very different to a lot of my clients, you know, and, and, you know, I'm more bold. I'm more out there. I'm, you know, I'm not afraid to tell the truth and that can really freak people out. I speak in bullet points. I can tear something apart really fast and furious, get right down to the problem because I'm about helping people as fast as possible. You know, we don't want to drag this out. So, but it can, you know, I've found in my life that people felt extremely intimidated by someone that was going around telling the truth. And I got myself in trouble a lot of times um, before I recognized, you know, when I didn't need to tell the truth, meaning just don't say anything at all when it didn't matter. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine that about you. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Because what would actually happen for me, Jack, was like people would look at me and be like, I can't believe you just said that. And honestly, I would be like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was just stating the obvious. And 
to me, like, it was like, isn't it just obvious that that's really what the problem is? I mean, why would you want to sugarcoat this or tap dance around it for, I don't know, a few decades, like so many people do. Let's just get to it and move forward. And so it can happen that people, they just don't connect with you. But I'll tell you what, someone that I have to tiptoe around or I have to change who I am and try and figure out how I'm supposed to phrase something or or address something with them, I don't want to work with them. We've all had clients that we were like, oh my God, how did I find this person? And it, that's just the truth. And we say never again, that, that personality type or that kind of person doesn't fit with me. But what we did in order to get that client somehow, some way, we negotiated who we are and said, well, you know what? I don't want to lose the money. I don't want to lose the client. So I can deal with this. And then we find out that it really doesn't work for anybody. And so you do need to be careful with not stepping out and not being yourself because you're going to get in a trap. And it could hurt your reputation, honestly, in the end. When you're who you are and you stand in that, people know what to expect. They can refer to you because they know for a fact that the next person is going to get the same person. And, and that's, again, how businesses grow. Yeah, and I think that's such an important point that people – don't like to talk about is that when you say, you know, helping people to decide, you know, the, to give them a, 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 a reason to make a decision about you, that may mean giving them a reason to decide not to work with you because they're not the type of person that you want to work Absolutely. with. Absolutely. But don't be confused. Everybody's so confused. Let's help the world by you know, helping people be less confused. I'm really comfortable with that. You know, if somebody says, you know what, this, you know, you're not my style or you're not what I'm looking for. I'm like, oh, thank God we figured that out because that's a good thing. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. And then that's where you said people oftentimes will fall into that negotiable mindset and say, no, I'll, I'll be different for this person so I can make it work. Oh, yeah, I did that. <laughs> I did that once a while ago. I had to, I honestly, Jack, ended up with the client from hell. I mean, and I, and it was real. I knew it. And we do know it, Jack. We know it when that client or, you know, group of people, we know that they're not our people. But what happens is, is we get really nervous about, well, I want to make sure that, you know, I grow my business and I don't want to say no. And I don't want people to think that, um, you know, that I, I can't work with certain people. And it's like, why not? Why not be clear? Because then you know exactly where your clients are or the people that are supposed to find you, they know how to find you. It makes marketing so much easier. And it makes making money so much easier. Because you know the deal. And, you know, Jack, I might be, you know, really to the point And, I mean, I literally can speak in bullet points. I, I love bullet points. My emails are short and sweet. Um, when someone tells me some long story, I can give you two sentences, and we just tore that sucker right down to the bottom. It doesn't mean that everybody else is like that. It just means they appreciate that from me. Because I'm going to help them fast and furious, and they can trust me that they're going to get the truth. And that's why people like working with me. They don't need to be like me. And that's where people, uh, business owners, once again, confuse themselves, is they think that they need to be like their client. And it's like, no, no, no. You just need someone that appreciates your style. And a lot of people who have a lot of different personalities and a lot of different styles appreciate other people's styles. And more than anything, they appreciate a unique style. And it's, uh, it's just the way other people are. We just think that we're supposed to be looking for ourselves. It's like, no, you need to be looking for people that appreciate who you are. That's it. Yeah, and, and so many of the people that I guess are, I hate to use the word guilty, but it is, and, and, and I've been guilty of it myself, is, you know, they're trying to appeal to the widest 
uh, you know, audience. They're trying to cast the widest net, which is oftentimes, you know, a, a fast path to that negotiable mindset. So let's put a face on this. You know, I immediately think of someone like, like Howard Stern, where, where he, he, he's out there and probably 90% of the population can't stand him, but that's okay. And he, he's extremely wealthy because of that, because uh, what he's done is, I guess, position himself for that 10 percent of the population that just absolutely loves and resonates with him. Uh, he's given them a reason to choose him. Uh, give a, an example, another example of maybe a celebrity out there that that. You know, we maybe have seen the transition because, you know, Howard Stern has been Howard Stern for as long as I can remember. But but a lot of people, it's that fear of the unknown. Well, if I, you know, what's going to happen if I change? Let's give a concrete example of maybe a celebrity that has really done that, has changed completely uh, to go from what they thought they were supposed to be to who they really are um, and what the uh, what the results of that have been. My favorite example for that, Jack, is um, Ms. Miley Cyrus. Um, She, to me, I find so incredibly interesting. And also what's interesting about my interest in Miley is I'm not really a fan of her, her music and her style per se, but I'm a fan of who she is. And, you know, she started out as this, you know, young girl with, you know, some talent and she started to put herself out there and then she started growing, you know, into her, her true personality. She got a little older, which gives people permission to put themselves out there. And she really went the distance and she made a decision, but she did not care what anybody else thought. And when she did that, people got really, you know, controversial around this young lady. But, you know, Miley did that one music video that she did where she's literally naked swinging on a wrecking ball. And it was so controversial. Well, number one, she's a beautiful young woman and, and the girl's got talent. And, but what it was was people couldn't believe how, confident she was. That was the problem. It wasn't right or wrong or, you know, morally, ethically, any of that. It was just their inner conflict with her confidence. Now, what happened for her was, number one, she got a ton of media coverage, right? Because we all know that uh, when things get like that, the media loves it, which that's a beautiful thing for a superstar. But her ticket sales skyrocketed. Her fan base increased. And she did not care about who doesn't like her music or who doesn't like her style or who doesn't like who she's become in the world. But you know what? Her arenas are full. Her album sales are sky high. She gets asked to host monstrous events like the Grammys. And it's all because people can trust that Miley's going to be Miley. They can trust that she's going to deliver. They love her music. They love her. And as far as Miley Cyrus is concerned, who cares what anybody else thinks? Because you can't fit the whole world in an arena anyways. There's only going to be so many tickets to be sold. And that's who she loves to be around. It's who she attracts. And That's what's so incredibly interesting about her. She became a superstar when she became truly who she was. And you know what? She's young, Jack. So she's got permission to, over time, she might change again. Who knows? Yeah, I, th- I think that's just uh, that's an excellent example because it really does. Uh, she has all those elements that you've talked about in that one. You know, obviously, she's uh, probably hit the, the bigger success than she's had in her whole career, uh, even though she probably has more people that uh, actively dislike her now. Where before <laughs> she was incredible? she had a mass of people that were probably just indifferent about her because she was another uh, you know, a kid on a, uh, Disney show or whatever. Yep. Um, and she didn't invest her time and money in becoming a better singer. 
right? She's and she's certainly not. I don't think uh, anyone would argue that she's the best singer uh, yeah. in in the world. But she decided to to go ahead and be who she yeah. truly felt she she's was. The she's the best at being Miley Cyrus. That's who she's truly the best at. And that's what we all need to decide and stop negotiating because we are the best at who we are. And it is the only time and space in our lifetime that we will ever be the best is at who we are. And it seems like the best in your industry, the best for your whatever service you offer. That's a perception. Anyways, that's not even real. The only real thing is us and who we are. Yeah. I think that, that, you know, what you've talked about is, uh, it can probably come down to a lot of it is taking responsibility and accountability, you know, rather than, than I have to be who the, the, the world or the industry or, you know, dictates that I am and, and being accountable, um, or as you say, the, the boss, right? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's to be, yeah. it's the to, boss of you. Yeah. Right? The boss of you, the boss of your income, the boss of your outcomes. And I know that you uh, have these three components that uh, you talk about for people that are ready to, you know, pull the trigger and do this, and, and how important uh, they are, and, and how purposeful you've kind of put these together. Um, and those are the respect, connect, and affect. I really want to make sure that um, you you talk about that, and because I think it's such an important part of, of what it is you do. So talk about you know, when people decide and that they're going to become that boss, right? They're going to be the boss. Uh, what um, impact that respect, connect, and effect has on that decision? They are really important, Jack, because they are the keys to eliminating negotiable mindset. And, you know, they, 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 each of those areas has a twofold. And basically, it does come down to your money mindset, your messaging, and your marketing. So there's going to be mindset, and there's also going to be skill set, which there's always going to be in business. You can't have one without the other. But when we look at respect, connect, and effect, the first thing, respect, you know, that, that's self-respect. And that's, that's number one. You know, we have to make the decision to have the lifestyle that we truly want. Generally speaking, when we, as business owners, when we decide what kind of business we want, we look at what literally like the business and we never take into consideration what kind of lifestyle we, we want. And we build our life around our business, which it needs to be the other way around or else you're not being self-respecting. So you have to respect that you deserve and desire certain things. And that's where you need to work from. Because a lot of times people, they grow businesses and they just can't wait till it's over so they can finally have a life. That, that will kill you and be in a struggle place forever. And then when we're looking at respecting the client, right? We, go, we respect ourselves. We respect our client. So we deliver on what we promise. We only offer what we're truly an expert at. And you know what, Jack, whether it's a handshake or a contract, you've got to deliver. And, you know, when you take that and and you decide that I'm going to be self-respecting by saying, this is who I am, this is what I offer, and this is what it costs. And in return, I respect my client by delivering, only doing what I say I'm going to do. And it doesn't matter how big or small the promise is, you make sure it happens. And that's the first thing. And that's around getting to that money mindset, right? Because in order to be self-respecting and charge what we're worth, we got to get ourselves really clear about how we truly feel about money. And that, that, that's, that's a process. And that's what I help people with. And when we move from respect to connect, that's when, when, when we become self-respecting, we get our mindset in check and decide what we really want. That's when we can start connecting with ourselves, tapping into who we really are and exploding it. So that's how the world sees you, right? It's about being honest with yourself. I mean, me, you know, I'm the boss, right? I'm authentic, truth, bear, boss. You can always expect that from me because you know what? I tapped in and I finally said to myself, you know, you're not somebody that just goes around loud mouth and saying your opinion. What I am is I'm really authentic and you're always going to get my truth, like it or not. And that's about tapping in being who you really, really are. And with connecting with self, then you connect, you're able to connect with clients. So be real. 
and you got to connect on an emotional level. And that means no tricks, no gimmicks. You got to build trust. That's how you connect with people by being trustful. And that's so much easier when you're yourself, I guess, than that. Oh my gosh. You can't even believe the pressure that it relieves. You, you know, so many people are so nervous about being who they are, but when you're who you are, you know, the words flow, the people flow, you know, you, you can sleep at night. You're not always trying to figure out some way to maneuver around something or get something to work. It's like, no, no, just do your thing. Now, of course you have to use some strategy and you have to, you know, it is, there is strategy around your messaging. It's got to make sense to people. So yeah, you do need to get help with that if you're unable to really make it rock solid. Um, but it'll always be real. And because you must build trust and you cannot connect with people without building trust. You have to be real. So when you're able to connect with clients, that's when you can affect them. So when you start connecting, you're able to make changes for people. These people start getting what they want. These people start getting a return on their investment with you. That's when they start referring. That's when you start growing. That's when people want you around. And then people are starting to call you when you start to be able to affect others. And in turn, you're going to affect your own life. You're going to affect your income, who you're being, what you're doing, and what you have. Because that's when you can truly be able to, you know, share, save, invest, be, do, and have. So. First, it's about getting really real in your mindset and being self-respecting. Then it's about connecting and being able to put it out there. And then you're able to truly affect. And that's growth, Jack. That's how businesses grow. Yeah. And I think that's the, the important part. You know, when you talk about, you know, mindset, skill set, um, you know, so many people favor, we talked about investing in their skill set or or, or investing in the tactical part, get another certification and things like that. But it seems to me that when people really see uh, dramatic, even explosive growth in their business, it's when they invest in the mindset part, which is exactly, I guess, what um, that all comes together with that respect, connect and affect. It seems like that's where you have a, a very concrete um, you know, definition and understanding of the, the mindset of uh, where yeah. you're coming from and, and who you're, yeah, of who you're being, um, yeah. with your clients. And that, you know, that's just a remarkable thing. And I can see where that can have such a, a big impact and quick impact when, when, uh, people get that. Uh, so let's talk about when people get it. What is it that, that, that pivotal point, that transition point, um, you know, because often people, they think they they just need to do it on their own, right? That they can do it on their own. They oh, or, yeah. or they say, you know what? I'm going to do what I need to build my business, but I let me let me make some more money first before I do it, which is almost uh, just so uh, conflicting <laughs> with what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, and, as soon and, as I make money, I, I will be able to have money. But it's like, well, but yeah, I know, but you don't know how to get to where you want to go and that's going to cost you some money. It, that's the hamster wheel. Once again, I want to struggle. I'm going to suffer because, you know, I don't know any different. You know, we were taught that Jack, we were taught, that, you know, you work hard. Um, you know, it's, it's very honorable to do things on your own. And, you know, certainly that works well if, you know, you know, you're not in high school and you don't have all the answers like on your arm, you know, that it's, it is honorable to not do that for sure. Right. Cheating. But we get really caught up in, I have to do this myself or I don't deserve it. And that is a very serious problem. Um, for small business owners is they don't want to be seen as someone that can't handle something. Um, they can't understand why they can't do it themselves because they're very intelligent people. They know how to do what they do, but there's other aspects of their business that they just don't get and they don't understand why they don't get it because they should be able to. They're smart enough. 
Um, it, it's just that we were taught that it's very honorable to do something on our own. We're usually taught that by someone who doesn't have a very successful business. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's our parents. It's our grandparents. It's, you know, family, people we see out in the world, you know. If we were told by someone with a very successful business, they will always tell you the truth. And the bottom line is, is you must have other people around you. You must get the support you need so that you can be who you are and grow your business. No successful business owner will ever say, oh, you need to do this on your own. Don't invest in yourself. Don't, don't hire people. Don't, don't do that. that that's... Um, but it, it lives really deep within us, Jack, and it's hard to let it go. Right. It seems like those are stories that, that people tell themselves. Um, and one of the things that I, I love is you kind of dig deep, you know, into the, the, the deeper layers of, of the real reason. And, uh, those are the reasons that people tell themselves, like, I, I need to do it on my own or I need to make more money first. But, um, you've kind of identified that at, at the core of this is that people may not really fully trust that they can achieve those goals that they set out for themselves based on, you know, maybe what's happened in their past or, or growing up. And that, that fear of the unknown, it's almost like a pr- protective layer that if I don't, if I don't try or I don't put myself out there, then I can't fail at it. Right. You won't get hurt. Right. So the only way that we can have a new belief around what we're able to achieve is to actually have the experience. This is the glitch that we have to have the experience before we can believe that we can have the experience, which is a troublesome statement. Um, And that's where it does take the support to help people through that process so they can have the experience of growth, of closing clients that they never thought they could close before, of offering offers they never thought they could offer before, of being who they truly are because they've never had that experience. But once you start breaking through that and stepping out into that uncomfortable place and starting to make things happen, that's where the confidence starts shooting through the roof. And then people start playing bigger and bigger and bigger. Because they're like, I think I got this. I think I got this. The only difference between the people that have big success and the people that struggle on a daily basis are they just decided to have one good experience and another good experience and another good experience. That's the only difference. Well, I can tell you that's, a, I think that's what truly makes you an influencer is, uh, you know, you being able to provide that map to, to, because a lot of people would never recognize this or, or be able to see, you know, that this is, uh, the, this path even exists or is, is within their reach. So, um, it's, uh, just really a, a tremendous, uh, um, the thing that you, that you put we people don't know through. You don't know, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah it, it is. Don't know. And, uh, and once we raise awareness that that's when we can make a change and that that's, you can't actually help anybody do anything. What you support them is to create high levels of awareness so they can figure out where they're actually at, right? Just like when you say map, you're correct. When you have that high level awareness, you know exactly where you are. Now you can pinpoint that on the map. Now you can get to where you want to go. If you don't actually know where you are, well, you're lost. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, Unfortunately, that's where a lot of people find themselves. Um, yep. So uh, here's what I, I want to know, and I'm sure a lot of people want to know, is what led Renee Gambino to create this business that, uh, you know, helps people with this and, and how you, you know, came to recognize this in yourself and realize that, you know, I can help others with this as well. Well, before I was doing this, Jack, I was in holistic health for 19 years, and um, I did a lot of body work. I owned a really successful wellness center and I had all kinds of practitioners working for me, people renting from me and, you know, we were helping people all day long. But one of the conflicts I I had, which I I didn't even actually know I had uh, for quite a while, was I would feel guilt around the fact that I did not fit in to um, the average holistic health provider package. Um, I wasn't really woo woo. I was very, you know, loud mouth Italian girl that probably cursed more than she should have. And, but I was extremely goal oriented and extremely client centered. And 
I finally learned how to respect my time, respect my fees. And, and I had these clients just coming and coming and coming. It was, it was almost magical. And, but I felt really guilty in the industry in general that I wasn't quote unquote like everybody else because, you know, you're supposed to be really soft and lovey and holistic and, and it just wasn't me. And I didn't hang out with other holistic health providers and I didn't get them because I always saw them as, you know, I hate to say this, Jack, but broken flaky, right? But definitely going to heaven. and. What I realized was what made me so successful was I was not stereotyped and I refused to stereotype myself because it just wasn't me. And interestingly enough, my clientele was men, women. I actually ended up in the end recognizing that my clientele was 90, 90% um, entrepreneurs or CEOs. And when I actually realized that I was like, oh, wow, right, like attracts like. But I had, you know, elderly people, I had young people, I had middle-aged people. So it, it didn't matter. They just appreciated who I was and that I delivered when they came in. I was great at what I did and I was always there. I was on time. I had all these standards in the environment and that's what they loved. But I recognized that after 19 years of that, it wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. And I decided that like I would step back and was like, what made me so successful at this? And when I started really peeling it back, I recognized that I had this innate ability to connect with people and help them through whatever process they needed to. And in, in that case, it was, you know, bodies. But what I recognized was the body has the innate ability to heal itself if given the right environment. And so does a business. So does a relationship. So does a bank account. If given the right environment. And I just understood that I knew this on such a deep level. And so I wanted to continue this. But I will tell you, Jack, that when I first started doing this, I put myself in a box. And I was literally putting myself out there because I was like, well, you were in holistic health for 19 years. And people are going to care about that. So I started putting myself out there in a much different way. And it was making my skin crawl to the point where I was like, I think that maybe this isn't for me. And then I recognized with working with my mentor that the problem was that I wasn't being me and I wasn't putting myself out there. And I had never done that before, tried to be somebody else. And that's when I recognized who I am is who I am. You know, I was born a Gambino and that means something. And when you're Gambino, you learn, you live a certain lifestyle and you grow in a certain way and a certain culture. And it's who I was born. And, you know, I'm not bossy, I'm boss. And that's different. And people appreciate that and they love and trust and respect that with me. And that's when I gave my position, myself permission to be who I was. And that's why I put myself out there now. Authentic, truth, bear, boss, take it or leave it. Well, I can certainly say that, you know, the people that I've seen that have worked with you, the people that the, 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 their businesses have transitioned. Um, and, you know, I think I can say with, uh, you know, have a much deeper meaning now that uh, folks have kind of learned more about you is, is the, the clients you have walk with a different swagger. They, yeah. they have a different confidence and, and they, um, and that confidence isn't because they got better at what they did, but it's got better. They got better at being who they are. And I think that's yeah. just a, a tremendous gift to be able to, to be able to bring people through that. Thanks. Yeah, it's exciting. It, there's nothing better for me than a client that contacts me and they're like, I did it. I totally did it. I went in there, I did that presentation, or I went in there, or I changed this offer, or I, I did it. I stood strong. I added value. I didn't negotiate, and, and I did it. And and then all of a sudden, like, it's another case of it, it appears magical for people. And I get I get so excited for them when all of a sudden they, they, they feel it. They have that experience. They feel really in control of who they are 
and you know, happy to wake up and do it again. <laughs> that is it's just uh, remarkable stories to see this. Um, if people are ready to uh, defeat mediocrity and uh, start being who they uh, really are, what how can they find out more about Renee Gambino and 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 get involved? Well, I'll make it easy for them, Jack. They can go right to ReneeGambino dot com. So that's R E N E E G A M B I N O dot com. All right, ReneeGambino.com, and we'll have that also on the uh, on the show post. Renee, I, I have to thank you for coming on and, and sharing this uh, uh, with folks. You you definitely are an influencer in in my book, and and to to see the results, it's just um, you know amazing how you're changing people's uh, business and and their their lives. So thanks for uh, coming here and, and sharing this with everyone. You are welcome, Jack, and thank you very much for having me. All right, folks, there you have it, ReneeGambino.com. Uh, you know, it's it's time to, to defeat that mediocrity, and Renee's uh, someone that is going to uh, uh, help you do it, and she is very, very good at it. So until next time on Influencers Radio, remember, you are the only real game changer. You've been listening to Influencers Radio. To get all past shows and updates on future shows, visit InfluencersRadio.com today. Or follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Influencers Radio.